Hey there, Joshua Hinland here, and today I'm in the beautiful Parque Almenderas here in Havana, Cuba, and I wanted to take a few minutes to give you a little bit of an overview of what you should know before you come to Cuba, because there is a ton of conflicting info out there online, especially for Americans coming to Cuba about who can enter and how you get in and what you can do once you get here. So we just wanted to give you some of our thoughts and I've got some notes written down on my phone here. So I will say I'm recording this in February of 2023, which is the middle of winter here, but it's still very hot. So that's why I'm sitting in the shade. But a lot of this info can change uh, all the time, even on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So this is in February, 2023. So if you're watching this later on, be aware that some of these things might've changed. Now, as of right now, uh, all you need as an American to enter Cuba is a visa, which you can buy online super easily. I think it was about $70 each. I'll put a link to that in the description to where you can buy that. And then just a simple customs form that you fill out either ahead of time or you can just scan a QR code when you're checking in at the airport and fill it out on your phone there as well. So really just the visa and the simple customs form, it's not that complicated. I think uh, there's this misconception in the US that it's really hard for Americans to travel to Cuba when it's really not that difficult. We flew in from the Fort Lauder Lauderdale Airport in Florida. Uh, it's about an hour and a half flight from Fort Lauderdale into Havana. Super simple. Uh, it was on Southwest, so we even got to check some bags for free. I uh, would definitely recommend that. It worked really well. Now, one of the things that you hear a lot about is what you should bring into Cuba. So some of the things that I would definitely recommend that you should bring because there are shortages here. And so some things just aren't available. Things that you should bring are soap, uh, toilet paper, sunscreen, and then possibly some bottles of water. Uh, that can change depending on the shortages. So we checked some bottles of water in our checked luggage uh, so that we had some when we started, but then we've actually been able to buy them a fair amount of places. But things that are not readily available are soap. So that's hand soap, body wash, shampoo, any toiletries like that, and then toilet paper. So the place we're staying, which is a Casa Particulares that we booked through Airbnb, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, that had none of those things when we arrived. So if we had not brought that stuff with us, we would have been out of luck. So we just put that stuff in our checked luggage and then brought it over. We'll have some extra toilet paper and things that we'll leave for the next guests after we're done. So definitely I want to bring that stuff. And then the sunscreen, it gets very hot. Even in February here, the middle of winter, it's about 90 degrees every day. You get some pretty high humidity. You're definitely going to want to bring some sunscreen with you because again, it's not easy to get a hold of here. Prepare to walk a lot as well. So Havana, especially, which is the kind of the area we've explored, so we didn't really make it out to other parts of Cuba, but Havana is a very walkable city and there's so much to see and explore and it's just so much fun to kind of walk around. There's a number of historic fortresses that are a lot of fun to explore. You can walk the Malacan, which is the miles of walkway they have along the ocean, along Havana Harbor. So there's so much fun stuff to check out. So just be prepared to walk a lot be prepared to drink a lot of water. We also brought uh, a number of kind of granola bar type snacks with us, which is something I would recommend. Um, it's always good to have some extra snack, things like that with you as well. I would recommend staying in Old Havana, which is where the museums are, the capital, the Museum of the Revolution, a lot of those fortresses, that's all where that stuff is. So I'd recommend staying in that area because you can then walk really easily to all of that stuff. I know when I was looking at places to stay, some people said it gets kind of loud, which it can, but I think the trade-off is well worth it to be able to be so close to tons of restaurants and kind of all of these uh, museums and fortresses. Now that also makes that area really touristy. So you'll want to make sure when you're here that you leave Old City Havana and walk out to areas like Miramar or this park where we are today. Some of these areas where a lot more of the Cuban locals live and you'll get to see more grocery stores, and a lot more just kind of the day-to-day -day life uh, when you come out to some of these other areas. Now, as far as the topic of where to stay, there are some really nice uh, new hotels kind of right in the old city. We'll put a couple links to some of them that we went into and are, are really nice and would recommend you check out if you wanna do that. However, we stayed in a uh, Casa Particulares, which is what the kind of home uh, Airbnb kind of bed and breakfast type places are called here in Cuba. So those, the advantage of those is it's a much more kind of authentic local experience. You're staying with a Cuban person. They're also extremely cheap. So ours was about $20 a night. So for our whole stay here, we only paid like $120. Whereas you're gonna pay maybe a couple hundred dollars a night at one of these nicer hotels. 
But along with that, you know, you get smaller rooms, the beds aren't as nice, not everything might as work as well in the bathroom. We have kind of a combination open shower, you know, toilet bathroom that all kind of runs together. So uh, things definitely aren't as nice, but it's kind of a much more real experience and a much cheaper experience at the same time. Another concern that a lot of people have is safety. We felt very safe the whole time that we've been here in Cuba. You do get hassled, like in a lot of countries as a foreigner, you get hassled a little bit with people wanting to uh, exchange money or just wanting to sell you things, ha have you come into their restaurant especially, but that's very normal as a tourist. That's things you're used to if you traveled internationally very much. So nothing major there, but really no safety concerns from our perspective as well. I know that's a lot of concern for Americans, but I, I don't think that should be an issue at all, at least uh, here in Havana. Now, I mentioned people wanting to exchange money with you. The money situation is very complicated. We actually have a whole nother video that we made on that on the channel, so make sure you check that out. We'll put a link in the description because the money situation is probably the most complicated of any country that we've traveled to. Uh, there's a lot of different options there and it gets very confusing with credit cards and cash and everything. So look for that video in the description and we'll uh, talk much more in depth about what you should know specifically about your money and how to use it while you're in Cuba here. But I think that's kind of everything that I wanted to run through uh, during our experience. It's a really great country. A lot of the people have been super nice. We've really enjoyed it. Gotten to try some really good food, especially if you like any kind of seafood, lobster, shrimp, those types of things can be really good. Those dishes here in Havana. The history is fascinating here. You've got fortresses older than anything in the US, even older than areas like St. Augustine in Florida. So, so much fascinating history. I really would recommend it for Americans. It's not that expensive to come here. You get amazing weather. We took a snorkeling excursion to a nearby beach to Havana. Had a great time snorkeled out to some shipwrecks. I did get stung by a jellyfish, which wasn't super fun, but made it through that okay. So really recommend uh, coming here to Cuba, especially if you're wanting someplace warm during the winter. Thanks so much for watching and make sure you look in the description for all of those links that I mentioned. We'll put as much info in there as we can. And if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments down below because there might be other things that come up uh, that things like laundry, we haven't done any laundry while we've been here. We're just bringing it back to the US and we'll clean it there. So I'm not sure exactly how, how you would go about doing that. But if you have any other questions, definitely leave those in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer. Thanks for watching and enjoy your trip to Cuba.